Okay, recording has started. Welcome to Simple Machines. Okay. okay. There you go, George, you have the floor. Okay, uh, my name is George Martin. Uh, I'm the event supervisor for this event. Uh, I've been doing it for uh, quite a while. And um, uh, Nicole, you're going to show them how to get to the website, right? Yes. Yep. I okay. will go ahead and you want me to do that right now? Do that. Okay. Rather quickly, I'm going to share my screen and kind of give you guys a step by step on how to um, access our web page and download the appropriate rules for the event. Um, can you guys see my Google home screen right now? Just kind of raise yep. your hand, George, if you got it. Can you see it? Yep, yep. Okay, all right, perfect. Okay. So Macomb Science Olympiad, macombso.org. We are elementary, so you will click on the elementary section. Everything you need here for pretty much any, any event is available. So you will click on the 2021 events and rules. And you will scroll down to simple machines. And right here has got the current rules. You can see sample test questions, workshop slides. All the necessary information is in here for you. So if you click on the download the current rules, oh, brings us to another window. Scroll down to simple machines. And here they are. So this is what, this is pretty much the Bible, correct? <laughs> that you're going well, to be following. That's the basic guideline, our parameters for the event, but uh, the handout gives some more specific information. Would you like me to bring that up? Yes. Okay. Which is the workshop slides? Uh, no, that's not. This one. Uh, there's what you want there, this I think. This one, yes. Uh, yeah, that's the handout. <clears throat> uh, and then if you go back, um, Click on sample test questions. Okay, this is a 12 page document, which uh, will pretty much give you some sample questions and some information on how, um, what type of things that I will be asking uh, for the kids and uh, there's some specific stuff in there. This is a this is one you really want to download. Okay. Okay. Would you like me to turn the screen back over to you, or is there anything sure. else you would like to share? Sure. No, that that's pretty much it. So. Okay. Okay. Back on you, George. Okay. So, the way this event's going to work, uh, by the way, if you've, if you've coached this event in past years, uh, the last five years, really nothing has changed. But let, we're going to run through the details on it. Uh, first of all, it's a station event. There are, will be 10 stations. The students will get two minutes per station. And then they'll be instructed to move to the to the next station. Uh, there will be 10 questions per station. So the result is a 100 question test. Um, <clears throat> each station. Most of the stations when they get there, what they'll find is the test questions are going to be taped down to the to the table. <laughs> this keeps them from inadvertently carrying them along to the next station with them. Um, <clears throat> most of the stations will uh, consist of a device, a tool, 
uh, or other object that um, they will be asked to evaluate. Um, at least one station, rather than have a, a, an object there, there'll be just pictures. And uh, one of the stations will be uh, primarily pulleys. There will be a standing frame with uh, two or more pulley setups within the frame for them to evaluate. Um, all questions are going to be multiple choice. Uh, there will be some yes, no, true, false type questions. And they will be either one point or two point questions. Um, we will use the zip grade answer sheet uh, that can be downloaded from the website so that the kids get a chance to practice with it. Um, okay. The first five questions at uh, each station are one point questions and they are essentially identify the machine. Pick up the object evaluate it, decide which simple machines are part of the object. Um, and these objects may be compound machines. Uh, for an example, uh, uh, a pair of scissors is a combination of two levers with a common fulcrum and two wedges. So they got to cut the paper somehow. So in that case, you would answer both uh, lever and wedge. Okay. Um, those first five questions are also going to be used as tiebreaker questions. Okay. The next five questions at every station are going to be two point questions, and they will test the students understanding and knowledge of the concepts of simple machines. That means, uh, can they identify and estimate the mechanical advantage of a machine? Um, do they understand the trade-offs that go? Whereas you, uh, by that I mean uh, a device may trade distance or speed or force, vice versa. Uh, you know, you use a very long lever so that you amplify the force, be, be, you know, it takes less effort to produce the amount of uh, 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 effort uh, or force on the load that you want. So you're trading distance for force. That's an example. Um, Uh, they are going to have to be able to identify um, the parts of a lever, you know, load, effort, fulcrum, uh, which comes, gets really important because they will also be asked to identify the class of lever. So um, that's something they need to be familiar with. Uh, they may be asked to make a measurement. For example, I may ask them to measure the length of the effort arm. Um, this is where, <laughs> among other things, I reserve the right to choose between English and metric measurements. And the reason I do that is I don't want to deal with complex fractions or decimal points. So I'm going to choose whichever measurement system is more likely to give me a whole number. <laughs> um, on levers in particular, I will choose where to put the labels to identify where the effort should be applied. So that again, the measurement from there to the fulcrum is more likely to give me a whole number. Um, any calculations that they are asked to make are going to include whole numbers or at worst simple fractions. You know, um, 
they are not going to be allowed to bring in a calculator. Uh, they won't need one, to be honest. Um, part of this is because we've had people in the past uh, who want to bring in their smartphone because there's a calculator on it. Um, but that smartphone is also internet connected. We don't need that. <laughs> so um, I will also provide the rulers. I have a whole stash of rulers that are both English and metric. And uh, I will pro also provide uh, scratch paper for them to use if they need it. Uh, to be honest, uh, when I've collected the scratch paper, I've found a whole lot more random doodles <laughs> than I have found actual calculations being done. So, um, <clears throat> finally, uh, recommendations on how to prepare the students for the event. Um, I recommend getting a hold of uh, whatever science books your elementary school uses. Uh, typically, Simple Machines is covered in grade four, uh, but that may, uh, that may change depending on which textbooks your school is using. Uh, there are a number of library books that are in the children, you know, that you can find it uh, that uh, talk just about Simple Machines. Um, if you're going to go to the internet and search on simple machines, uh, I would suggest that you add science as part of your search team. Um, in the past, um, I have found both uh, software companies uh, and a rock band that call themselves simple machines. <laughs> you're going to want to uh, not clutter up your search window with all of that. Um, things that you can find online, uh, you can find videos, games, worksheets, um, any number of uh, teachers lesson plans, and that type of thing are all available out there. Now, as to working with the kids themselves, uh, my my recommendation is that you just gather up a bunch of common objects, uh, kitchen uh, utensils, uh, tools. Um, anybody that does woodworking or metalworking has gonna, are gonna have a lot of tools that can be uh, used for the kids to learn about. Um, some things such as pulleys might be a little harder, um, and uh, but I, but you can find small pulley type objects out there. Um, George, we we have a question. OK. All right. Uh, Mike Walker, you may go ahead and ask your question. Um, I've been it's not a question exactly. Um, I'm, I've been coaching it for quite a while. And to be honest, I found your materials on the website almost enough to, to teach everything for it rather than going too much on the website. I mean, it's been a, it's a very good, simple machine going through the concepts that you need. Um, so I definitely strongly recommend people downloading that. Oh, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, some people do like to go out and, and supplement that, and that's just fine. OK. Um, anyway, getting back on the on the different devices, uh, just uh, one device that you may want to go out and use more resources is going to be uh, inclined planes. Um, I always dedicate one station to inclined planes, and it's always done entirely with pictures. Because frankly, in the real world, inclined planes are huge. They don't fit on a tabletop. So <laughs> uh, anyway. Um, it is my intention also at this point that should, should there be a, a, a practice tournament of any type, uh, I will endeavor to be at all of them, should they happen. 
we'll, you know, um, keep our fingers crossed and hope that we can do some of that stuff. But, uh, okay. Uh, do we have any additional questions? Because that's pretty much everything I feel I needed to cover. Uh, I can get a little more specific on some of the stuff if people want. George, I have a question. Um, okay. Okay, go ahead. Um, I noticed um, there's calculations. Um, how complicated do you expect these calculations or the the math that they're expected to do to be on the um, actual test? Actual calculations are going to be fairly simple. It's more going to be a matter of, um, for an, an example, if they measure the length of the effort arm and it's twice as long as the load arm of a lever, and I ask them what the mechanical advantage is, they should be able to say two. Um, oh, and by the way, just, just so you know, um, all of this assumes there is no friction. Okay, everything is idealized. Um, I will never ask them, for example, to actually calculate the mechanical advantage, say, of a screw, because that involves using pi. <laughs> and again, I don't want to go there. What I may ask them to do is look at two different screws and say, which one is going to have the greater mechanical advantage? Now, that requires being familiar with the formula, but not actually needing to crunch the numbers. Would you like me to share the screen where it has on that handout with the mechanical advantage and the different formulas? Gosh, you can, sure. All right. Maybe it'll give people a better understanding what you are referring to? Sure. Would it be something like this? Yeah, okay, that shows, uh, the top one shows inclined plane, and then you have wedge, and then shows the lever and the formulas for them. I may ask the students to tell me how they would measure the mechanical advantage. They don't actually have to do the calculation, but they have, uh, I may ask them to tell me which form, what the formula is, so they need to at least be familiar with these. You scan down a page, you should get to the, let's see, yeah, there's wheel and axle uh, and there's screw. Um, so they okay. need to be able, they need to be able to, you know, I may ask them uh, which is the correct formula for a mechanical advantage of a screw. And I may include, you know, all those formulas as a choice <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, have them pick the right one. But other than that, you know, but like I said, they're, they're, I really don't expect them to have to do a lot of math. Um, it's more identifying ratios than anything else. Um, oh, one example that I may also give them is uh, one question I may give them is that if the effort moves a given distance, how far will the load move? So they need to, you know, again, they need to be able to do a little bit of quick measurement and figure out a ratio. But since everything's multiple choice, uh, all of the answers are going to be uh, probably most likely going to be whole numbers. The only time a fraction might get in there is if a if I'm asking about a, a very specific device that I have sitting on the table and, and I end up with a fraction. Yeah, other than that, I, I don't see a real problem. Any other questions? Okay. Any questions? This is your one opportunity that you can actually speak one on one with the event supervisor. 
Is everybody oh okay? We have a question from um I can't yeah. tell if your first name is Kelly or if your first name is Tess. <laughs> Hi, this Hi. is Tess. Okay. Um, my question is so it sounds like we don't need to bring anything into the actual test with us. Oh, yeah. Uh, I expect that the only thing that students are going to need to bring in is a uh, normally is a pencil. Now, I haven't talked to anybody about our COVID uh requirements so i don't know if i'm going to supply pencils which will then be disinfected between sessions or how we're going to do that yet um in the past i've allowed students to bring in a clipboard as long as there was nothing on it and that's because a lot of kids like to put their answer sheet on a clipboard to make it easier to carry from station to station uh, and really, that's it. Great, thank you. Sure. Well, one other thing I will throw in just because I usually get a question on this is typically uh, because it's two minutes per station, uh, I give the kids a little bit of warning before time to move to station, move stations. I usually try to give them five or 10 seconds warning. And then I shout out change station and they're expected to move to the next station. Uh, this year, especially considering that we may have to space the stations a little farther apart, uh, I may also build in a few seconds of transition time so that they actually really do get two minutes at the station. Uh, although um, I can always tell which students are really well prepared because um, they're basically twiddling their thumbs and playing with the objects <laughs> before the time is up. But there's always a few that need every bit of that time. So I'm going to take that into account this time. Okay. All right. Are there any other questions? Are Is there that... any? I have a question. Yes, go ahead. So do the students, because of COVID, do they have to do anything special, different, or do they have to wear gloves or something? Or what are the defined rules for how you're going to handle these transitions from station to station? and touching things and wiping stuff down as they move forward. Uh, so you want to jump in, Kelly or Nicole? Yes, I will. So um, uh, currently we um, are, you know, obviously dealing with an ever changing environment. So as we get closer to the competition time, we will have the appropriate uh, regulations in place. So we will have distance stations um, most likely we will be providing clean pencils. We will have sanitizing stations, et cetera. Um, and as of right now, if we were to have our competition, say tomorrow, we would be disinfecting every station, you know, in between uh, the children coming and handling them. But it is ever evolving. So as we get closer to the competition time, uh, we will announce the new, you know, precautionary measures that we will set in place. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, well, if um, there are no other questions, I guess we can conclude the Simple Machines session. How many total stations you said they're gonna be? 10 stations. Thank you, George. Mm -hmm. Yeah, in, in the past, I've had to set up uh, two complete sets of 10 stations uh, because I've had to uh, run as many as 20 teams at a time. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to need to do that this time or how we're going to run it, but each, each student will do 10 stations. Okay, is everybody comfortable? being able to access the website to download 
the necessary documents for this event. Does anybody need a refresher course? Any questions? Because if not, we're going to wrap up our session. OK, George, I would like to thank you very much for your time. We appreciate you. Thank you, George. Yep. Thanks, everybody. It came. OK. All right. I this concludes. Yep. OK. OK, Bye -bye. take care.